Hi everyone, Bob Black for Spider TV. You know, this is a really special year for University of Richmond Athletics. We have several anniversaries that we are celebrating, and I would argue the point that none is bigger than the one we're gonna talk about right now. It came 50 years ago this December. It's the only bowl victory in Spider history. It was the Tangerine Bowl when the Spiders defeated Ohio 49 to 42. And we'll be celebrating it in full at the Delaware game Saturday at Robin Stadium. We have an opportunity now to talk with two of the stars, two University of Richmond Hall of Famers who led to the Spiders to victory on that day. Buster O'Brien, Spider quarterback, and Walker Gillette, Spider wide receiver, who were indeed two of the standouts in that game. Buster, 39 of 58, 447 yards, four touchdowns in that game. But the stats don't tell the story. You tell the story of that game. How were the Spiders able to pull off such a monumental upset against the team that was unbeaten and untied and nationally ranked going in? Well, we first of all, we had good people. <laughs> we had a good coaching staff and we had good players. And, uh, and that was the most important thing. But then Ohio, as far as their defense, they played the same defense all night. And they'd get in the defense and play whatever it was. And they changed defenses, but they played the same one. So after the second snap, we knew what they were going to do. And we just took advantage of it and started slinging around to this guy. Yeah, you had 39 completions, but 20 of them went to this guy, to 20, Walker Gillette. How 20, come? 20 went to Walker. If you got Walker Gillette playing for you, you're going to throw the ball 20 times. Like, yeah. Wouldn't you think it's the defense would figure that out eventually? What, what were they trying to do? Well, they were, they were playing, actually playing what we call a cover two. They were playing mm -hmm. two, two yeah. safeties, mm -hmm. and they were playing uh, zone underneath. And, uh, but he, he got, kept getting open. And Jimmy Livesey, the other uh -huh. receiver, caught 12 balls mm -hmm. that night. So it was a, uh, we had two really first-class receivers. Walker, um, at what point do you kind of go to your quarterback and say, hey, they can't cover me. Get me the ball. Well, it's interesting. The thing that happened that night is we started the game off running the ball. And I remember Coach Jones calling us over on the sideline. He said, these linebackers are coming up, and every time we ran the ball, they're hitting our running back to the line of scrimmage. He said, we're going to change this. We're going to get these linebackers off the line of screen. He said, Buster, start throwing the ball. He just, we're going to throw. And, of course, I'm just grinning. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and shoot, but he started throwing, and he just kept right on throwing. <laughs> and those linebackers finally realized they had to back up, and then we started running the ball sometimes, throw the ball in the flat to uh, Jimmy Crenshaw, one of the running backs coming around uh, on the outside. But I'll never forget it when we were on the sideline, and Frank said, we're going to start throwing now. And you had a big smile on your face. <laughs> and, you and it was a shootout, right? 49-42. At what point did you figure, hey, maybe a team that has the ball last is going to win this thing? We, you, I don't know. You can't keep track of a score that well when you're playing with yeah. that much going on. It's just we'd score, they'd score. There was big plays going on on the field all the time. And, and uh, it, I remember at the very end, we were ahead. And who was it, Buster? Just a few seconds left. Yeah, and we, we us we realized we were going to win. Not till then, I said, you know, they they can't beat us now, and that's that's a good feeling to be on the field the last few, and say we got it. Did you realize how big big a deal it really was to do what you did? No, I didn't. I, uh, I don't think I realized how big the game was. Uh, I'm sure Frank Jones knew how big the game was because it, it was set, it made the it put the school on the map, and it did a lot of. It was my junior year, so it did a lot for me because to start my senior year, I mean, everybody was looking to see what I was going to do again. But it, I didn't. I didn't. Th I didn't think about how big it was. It wasn't that many bowl games back then. But it, right. I was just glad to be down in Orlando and have a little little warm weather and practice. There's no Disneyland. There it was nothing in Orlando. But, but we had a great time down there. And it just worked out right. It sure did. We were did. lucky. What do you, uh, you were more than lucky. I think you were. <laughs> you were good. What do you remember from that? From the feedback? From the aftermath? Buster of, of of celebrating, you know, one of the biggest wins in Richmond athletics history. You know, this is this is going to sound like it's not, it's not a true story, but it is. <laughs> I don't go a single week ever without somebody saying something about the Tangerine Bowl to this day. Mm -hmm. And I think I told you a little while ago. I was in Orlando last weekend to see my son, and some guy found out I went to University of Richmond. He said I was at the Tangerine Bowl game a long time ago. And wow. I said I was too. <laughs> he but, remembered. But you almost weren't at the Tangerine Bowl. That might be a story that not too many people remember. What happened there? Well, I was a, I was a fifth year student at the time. I was a graduate student, and there was an NCAA rule that graduate students could not play in bowl games, and I didn't think I could go, and I did not know I could go. Uh, until uh, the Wednesday before the game. And I literally didn't practice at all besides Wednesday and Thursday before the Friday night game. So, and then we were going to the field and Coach Jones said, said, sit down, boy, 
<laughs> and I sat down beside him. I thought, I'm going to catch the grief, some grief now. And because uh, I had not been very pleasant the whole week, I didn't think I could play. And uh, he said, You're eligible to play in the game, but don't tell anybody. Huh. I said, he, he said, The coaches don't know yet. And uh, so that's the first time I found out I could play it was a Wednesday before the game. Wow. Walker, what would you have done without this guy in the Tatarine Bowl? <laughs> I don't know. I, it, that reminds me of the thing we were practicing, and Charlie Richards was practicing every day because we didn't think Bus was going to play. And I remember I ran a, a pattern in practice, and the sun got in my eyes. And Charlie had a heck of a ball, threw the ball, and it stuck right in my helmet right here. <laughs> and uh, the coaches went nuts because they took my helmet off my eyeball and just swelled completely shut. <laughs> they didn't know what was going to happen to me, and of course it was all right the next day. But uh, I didn't. We, we didn't know Bus was going to be able to play. Wow. And it, it just. Uh, it, it, I'm glad he did, but uh, it, the players, we, we were just out there trying to get ready for the game. He threw four touchdown passes, but he also loves to brag about a touchdown run. What do you remember about hey, your buddy he, Buster he, running? He ought to brag about that because you know, he couldn't run a lick. <laughs> uh, call him peg legs, you know, a little bit of tiny legs, had a round body, you know, but he had a heck of an arm. But he had this option play, and Buster could tell about it to me, but he, he would uh, go down the line of scrimmage and pitch it to the running back. Well, he's been doing that three years. Never ran the ball in his life. <laughs> in Tangerine Bowl, the defense, uh, defensive end and the cornerback had already gone up to the pitch. Man was waiting for him to throw it, and it was a hole there big enough to drive a bus through. And bus had just turned up the field and ran right in. <laughs> ran right in for touchdown. What do you remember about that bus? <laughs> why, why did you take off running? That couldn't do anything else. <laughs> That's right. Nobody to throw the ball. Couldn't there. pitch it. Okay. Yeah. And uh, we kidded. They, they did two TV commercials while I was in the middle of that run. So it took some <laughs> time for me to get in the end zone. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of TV commercials, you were also saying in relation to you eventually being announced that you wouldn't be able to play. That was a big deal in Richmond at that time, wasn't it? It was really funny. They literally uh, had a, a news bulletin, and they stopped the soap operas in Richmond Whoa. on the TV stations on Friday afternoon, or Thursday afternoon, and said that I was declared eligible for the Tangerine Bowl. And they interrupted soap operas? They interrupted soap operas. That is a big deal. That is a big deal. Yeah. That's a huge, <laughs> huge deal. Let's reminisce a little bit more of Buster O'Brien and Walker Gillette as we get ready to celebrate 50 years since the Tangerine Bowl. That, that must be mind-boggling to you guys. It is. It doesn't, it doesn't seem like yet, but it's been, it's been a long, long time. Walker, what will, the, will, what will the weekend be like? For you guys, how many guys are coming back? What will, what will the stories be like? Give me one. But well, the older you get, you know, the better they are. <laughs> you, you get better to get older, but the stories and the nicknames. The thing I remember most is what we called each other, the nicknames, because we all remember that. Uh, and that that's what makes you close. But it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. We all be telling a bunch of lies and reading our name tags if we don't recognize each other and stuff like that. The game was great. And the season was great. It finished eight and three. You won the Southern Conference. You were unbeaten. You were six and zero. But it didn't start out so great. You guys were zero and two to start the season. What happened there? Well, I heard that. Uh, yeah, I didn't think about it. Uh, we lost the first game. What West Virginia and then Toledo. Yeah. Uh, it happens. Maybe we weren't passing enough. <laughs> that changed. That changed in a hurry. By game three, you started to pass, and I think you won what seven of the last eight. Seven only, last only eight. Virginia yeah. Tech beat yeah. you, right? That's right. Seven last. So what eight. happened? Yeah, I don't. I just, you know, I don't know don't what happened the first two. To be, be honest with you, we uh, Toledo and West Virginia both had good football teams, and Tech had a good football team. So um, uh, we didn't get beat by any slouches. They were all good teams, and and yet, as I said, we we had some good people. We had a great staff, and and it just sort of everything came together and, and worked out well for all of us. Well, we love having you guys uh, back. How much are you able to continue? You're both relatively from the area, still living right here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. How much are you still following your spiders? Well, I follow them every, every weekend, okay? But uh, I, usually, I get up here two or three times a year. And uh, Coach Huseman and I have known each other for a yeah. long, long time. And uh, That's I, from when he coached at William well, he Mary. He coached at William right? Mary. My son was a graduate assistant there. So we first met there, and, and then we stayed uh, in contact over the years. And he's a great guy, great football coach, good football man. Absolutely. So. Walker, how about from your perspective, how often do you follow on the Spiders? I follow him. I try to get up here, but his, his bus gets up here. We try to meet up and sit up in the stands and analyze the game. <laughs> I watch the games now totally. It's, it's not a fan. I just watch it. If it's entertaining, it's fun to watch. If it's not entertaining, I don't. Uh, get, but I wanted to mention something else about the Tangerine Bowl. It was the interesting thing happened there. Catching all those passes, I had no idea I'd caught that many passes. Mm -hmm. And uh, a close friend of mine in high school that I played football with in high school, was watching the game. And like Buster, I run into people still now that, that, that watch the game. And he said, I'm going to drink a beer every time you catch a pass. 
Well, I caught 14 passes in the first half, and he said he almost missed the second half. He said he couldn't stand up a seat. <laughs> so he lived up to his word, though. Huh? He had to drink six more, though. <laughs> yes, he did. Absolutely. Well, I'll tell you what. You guys go toast each other. Go have a couple. Enjoy it. Tell some great stories. It'll be great having you back for the Delaware game at Robin Stadium next week as we celebrate just a remarkable accomplishment of 50-year anniversary. Thank you, guys. Welcome, Gillette. And Bob, thank you. Thank you. Thank thank you. It's going to be a lot of fun.